Thank you for listening today on Revealing Wholeness, sponsored by Infinity Whole Health. Check out our website at infinitywholehealth.com, where we are revealing the eternal in each individual, the infinite in the individual. The creativity is made manifest. Limitation is let go. Now, here's your host, Dr. Troy Munson. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Troy Munson. And I, I get clients that come in and they'll, they'll come in for one condition, but when they realize that everything kind of relates to everything else, they'll often tell me other stuff. And so like I had one client that just texted me this morning and they were a bit distraught because they're like, why are my breasts so tender and I'm not even around my cycle? And, and I don't like the word cycle, like you'll hear cycling women or around my cycle or my monthly cycle. Women's, women's cycle is all month. It isn't just the seven days of the menstrual cycle. That's part of the whole cycle. And in understanding all that, I've, I've done a fair amount of, of podcasts on women's cycle and do catch those. But this specific one, we're just working on breast tenderness and she asked me about it, but it was, and I started talking about it. She goes, oh, no, no, that's not me. Mine happens right at two weeks after my period begins or two weeks before my period's going to begin. And many women will have breast tenderness during their, their menstrual cycle or right at the beginning. And both are typical prolactin issues. Now, you can go and Google prolactin. It's a hormone that's produced in the pituitary, but there's some confusion coming out. The pituitary should be maintaining the ovarian cycles well enough that we have enough estrogen being produced and enough progesterone being produced. And so most women now that I deal with that will come in, let's say they're on birth control, which is not uncommon. They're now giving birth control out where they're doing a lot more progesterone than they are estrogen in the birth control. Not that I condone that because they're both synthetic and they're still going to cause problems, but at least they're doing it in a better way. And so my last little comment on birth control is that is a complete dysregulation of a female cycle. It's faking your body into thinking it's pregnant so you don't have a cycle. That's called dysregulation. So women that come in saying, well, we regulated my cycle with birth control. I'm like, no, you didn't. You completely dysregulated it so that you wouldn't have one. And, and that's okay for the time being, but we'd rather fix the cycle so that you don't have to be on birth control and now your cycle is actually normal. So anyways, prolactin levels, when we get all these hormones running in the blood, they tend to thicken things. And so lymphatic channels can be thickened. Liver channels will be thickened. So that's why we have these gallbladders that go bad with high estrogen because it thickens bile. And now we have sludge in the gallbladder and now we start forming stones and eventually the gallbladder goes bad. And it's more often with women than it is with men. So this prolactin is also not doing its job of regulating estrogen and, and progesterone and other hormones. And so now we start getting these channels, these lymphatic channels, which is really our immune system channels. They run right along with blood vessels. And if you've caught my lymphatic um, podcast, great. If you haven't, you might go back and listen to that. But we have these vessels that travel right along with my with your arteries and veins. Men and women both have lymphatics. That is how our immune system distributes. If you ever cut yourself and it finally stops bleeding, and yet there's still this white fluid or clear fluid that's coming out, even as you're forming a scab, and it's kind of a little wet, that is lymphatics. So that's lymph. And so that lymph is your white blood cells trying to get out there and fight any infection because of that cut. Well, we also have those channels running through the breast tissue quite vigorously. And the breast use a lot or need a lot of nutrients, especially for things like breastfeeding. And so they're built that way. But if we have these channels that are all clogged, we now have breast tenderness that can be even worse. Women will develop fibroid you know, tissue and scar tissue in their breast because of lymphatic channels that don't drain very well. Well, how do we get lymphatics to do better? Well, some of you may have experimented with what they call dry brushing. 
You know, they brush the skin, which simulates lymphatic drainage. Some will even hop on a rebounder and jump and try to get lymphatic drainage. I like to do a product called Linum B6 that is very thin. Uh, you know, it, it's not viscous. It's very, its viscosity is very low, so it's very, very thin. I hope I'm saying that right. It's very thin, and so it cleans lymphatic channels. And I'll do that for women that have breast tenderness, but we're also going to work on the adrenals. We're going to work on stress management. We're going to work on the liver and starting to get the liver to clean better, but it may take some time. It might take three or four cycles in order to get the liver and the lymphatics clean enough where the breasts don't feel tender with your cycle. But we're also going to work on things like, hey, let's control how much sugar you're eating. Let's control how much bread you're eating, how much starch you're eating, because that will clog things up too. But if you're out there thinking, I only want bread, I only want sugar, I only want chocolate, well, then we've got to go back to the digestive system and fix that so you can actually process protein and get it into your blood, because you're going after easy foods to digest rather than the more complex foods that actually add value to your body. So as we deal with one problem, it's never just that problem. There's all these other systems that tend to break down with that particular problem. So as you kind of understand this and maybe even think, oh, this is really complicated. Well, luckily you have it on a podcast right now and you can listen to it a couple times. But these are the kinds of things that you need to start handling. And so it all comes back to how you're eating, how you're digesting, how you're cleaning out the body. And all of a sudden, as you do the things better and better and better, you realize, my gosh, my body magically just produce, you know, manages itself better. Well, duh, you're giving it replacement parts and you're doing things in a really wonderful manner. Why wouldn't we expect it to perform admirably doing that? Because it does. It's really quite elegant and simple if we just pay attention. But if we eat you know, synthetic fats or hydrogenated oils or fast food or crappy canned box processed refined fast food, you know, we're not giving our body replacement parts. We're kind of shortchanging things because of time, because of taste buds. And those are things that we need to really start retooling and say, I just need to do things differently. If I want to have a nice fulfilling life for as long as I am on the planet, So those are ideas that I want to interject there so that you can kind of take them and say, is that something that I'm willing to do? Because if you're going to come in with breast tenderness and we're not really willing to change things, you just want to take a bunch of supplements, I suppose we could do that and we could kind of limp this body along. But inevitably, you're going to be like, I'm really tired of taking supplements. Is there any way I can get off these supplements? Invariably, I have this conversation with folks. Yes, there is. We want you to get these things in your diet. That's why I'm always going to point you back to your diet. If you're going to eat, then let's start eating food that is actually valuable. That breast tenderness of where it comes from, I I want to at least explore one more topic, and that is when we have breast tenderness around ovulation, which will be at two weeks, so from the start of your period to... The start of the next one should be four weeks, 28 days. Two weeks in at day 14 is ovulation. And so that ovulation, we have estrogen spiking. So if we have breast tenderness at that time, then it absolutely is an estrogenic issue. And prolactin is making a bit of a difference. But we've got to do something with your liver like sooner than later. And if you're having pain, or rather, excuse me, if you're having breast tenderness, At that 14th day, I'm going to bet that you're probably a migraine sufferer or a headache sufferer. I'm going to bet that your bowels probably don't move very well. I'm going to bet that you may have even already had your gallbladder out. I hope not. Please keep it if you can. But those are things that we would say we need to get those estrogens out of your body. Now, if you're overweight, you're producing estrogen and fat cells. If you're thin and you have this problem, you need to take another quick peek at your lotions. Most smoothing, softening lotions have estrogen in them, though they won't tell you that there is. But those estrogens are going to be what we call exogenously derived in your body. They're coming from an external source. Endogenous means you produce the estrogen, 
Exogenous means that you got them from the environment. Now, as I sit here in the studio, we've got paint on the walls, carpet on the floor, veneers on the chair that I'm sitting, the table that the, the microphone's on, the plastic that the microphones are made of, the computer systems. I mean, there are so many estrogenic compounds in this room right now, it's ridiculous. So there's a lot of estrogen in our environment just in the form of plastics and veneers and paints and so dyes on clothing. It's all there. So always working on liver is, seems to be what I talk about a lot of and there's a reason why because our environment is filled with a lot of different chemicals. And so those things, if, you're, if you start that process and really start cleaning up environment and cleaning up your diet and cleaning up digestion, cleaning up your liver... You'll find all of a sudden that, hey, I don't have that breast tenderness at that mid-cycle, that mid-monthly cycle, like seven days after I'm done with my period, where ovulation is occurring. If it's at the end, like we talk about with your cycle, with the menstrual cycle, then we've got prolactin levels that are a little bit worse. we got some hormonal imbalances. We need to work on um, nutrition. We need to work on blood sugar. We need to work on liver as well and digestion as well. There comes a little bit more. So th those at least give you some ideas of how to work on things where your breast tenderness occurs most. If it's all throughout the month, we got bigger fish to fry. Just contact me because it's easier to talk about in person. So I hope that helps. Until next time, I'm Dr. Troy Munson. The information on Dr. Troy Munson's podcast is meant to educate the listener and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease.